Hello students, welcome back. Today I am Anuradha from DPS Lohani Lama Chod, going to start on the topic of the same chapter that is structure organization of animals. So in this chapter we have already discussed about the introduction part, definition of tissue and the classification of tissue. So on the basis of classification we have classified the tissue into four. What are they? Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and the neural tissue. Right? So here uh, we have discussed uh, some more important thing like different types of epithelial tissue. Okay? And now we will proceed towards the more information about this epithelial tissue here. So as we know that epithelial is what? Epithelial is uh, something which is covering, covering the free surfaces of the organs, right? And tissue we know that it is what? It is a group of cells which, which is having same origin, okay? And having the same or uh, uh, same uh, place, right? So here again we have classified this epithelial tissue into two parts. What are they? Simple epithelium as well as the compound epithelium. So here also we have discussed about it. Simple is what? Simple is the single layer of the cells. It is known as simple epithelium. And when there will be uh, more than one layer, layer of cells, it is known as compound epithelium. Okay. When it will be a single cell. And we have discussed that it is a basement membrane. And this basement membrane is non-cellular. So when these cells are arranged in a single layer, it is known as simple. And when these layers are arranged in a more than one layer, it is known as compound epithelium. That much we have done. So now again, again we have classified simple epithelium into different um, one that is the squamous epithelium. Cuboidal epithelium, columnar, pseudostratified and glandular epithelium. This one also we have discussed that squamous is what? Squamous uh, is having the cells which is having this square in shape. Okay. Or we can say in squamous epithelium the cells are like a um, tile structure and it is very thin layer of the cells. Okay. It is having very thin layer of the cells. Now, if you will talk about the cuboidal, the cuboidal epithelial tissue, it is having the cube-like shape, okay? And columnar having the column-like cells, okay? Columnar having the column-like cells. Like these cells, it is placed here. Now, I will make you understand that again this columnar can be of two types. What are they? They can be having the microvilli or the cilia in their structure okay so they are the cube shapes and one more important thing the nucleus is present at the base of the cell in case of columnar while in case of cuboidal the cells are placed if uh, it is a cube like shape if it is a cube like shape so the cells are present at the middle one okay so we can say that in cuboidal the cells are or the nucleus is situated at the center and in columnar the uh, nucleus is situated at the base of the cell right now uh, along with this uh, what are the function of these type of tissue the squamous tissue as i have said it is very thin in layer so what it is helpful for it is helpful for the exchange of gases Okay, for the exchange of something and this exchange it is known as diffusion. So we can relate that from in our body where the squamous epithelial tissue can be found where there will be a proper exchange of the gases. Like if you will talk about the um, lungs in specifically in the bronchioles they are present there and as well as where other places where diffusion get capillaries. Okay, the walls of the blood capillaries. So, these are the places where the diffusion can take place very easily. Now comes to the second one, the cuboidal epithelial tissue. In cuboidal epithelial tissue, what we have discussed that this is having the cube-like cells. And the function of the cuboidal cell is absorption and 
secretion okay so the function of cuboidal as well as the columnar having the same function that is absorption and secretion so wherever there is a need of absorption where we can say our intestine small intestine so what is required there must be proper absorption where in case of the tubular system there must be need of this absorption uh, absorption reabsorption of nutrients right so uh, these are the examples where we can found the cuboidal as well as columnar epithelium cuboidal or columnar epithelium can be having some modification like this one is a brush bordered one okay this one is having the brush bordered one which is having the microvilli and these microvilli are increasing the surface area for proper absorption right and here some cilia can also be present if cilia will be there so what is the function of the cilia cilia is responsible for the locomotion for the movement but this movement will be in only specific direction only one direction right so this is helpful for the direction if you will talk about uh, the cilia where we can uh, see this uh, movement in case of the fallopian tube where the ovum or the ova move in a only one direction right so here if you will talk about the brush border epithelium we said that where absorption is required right here so we have discussed all these three in the previous lecture and here there is one more pseudo stratified what is the meaning of pseudo stratified stratified means more layers okay when there we are talking about the layers you are talking about the stratified but here the layers of the cells are not true because pseudo means false and stratified means layer so it will resemble like that it is having different layers of cell but it is not like so why because they are having no proper layer of the cells instead of that there is only one layer of cells right and examples where we can found the pseudo stratified epi uh, epithelium it can be found the trachea okay so make sure that you must know the examples or the location where these type of tissues are found uh, because these are the important question for the mcq right and the fifth one the glandular epithelium now this glandular epithelium is the modification of the cuboidal as well as columnar epithelial tissue okay so on the free surfaces of these type of tissue we can see that some glands are present what are the what are present glands are present and the name itself indicates that what is the function of glands they may be secreting something okay as we have discussed the function of cuboidal and the columnar is the secretion right so they will uh, secrete uh, some products like if you will talk this glandular epithelium they can be classified into two but these classification which i have shown here it may be on the basis of two different thing here we are talking about the on the basis of number so on the basis of number the glandular epithelium can be of two types what are they unicellular and the multicellular unicellular is what it unicellular when whenever we are talking about the isolated cells and multicellular when there is a group of cell right so we can say that this unicellular glandular epithelium can be found in the uh, stomach okay in when, when we are talking about the globulins and this multicellular can be found where when there will be a more cells or the group of cells in when we are talking about the intestine right now on the basis of their secretion on the basis of their secretion or how they are secreting we have divided into two what are they exocrine as well as endocrine and we know that what is exocrine gland those gland which secrete their secretion from a particular or through a tube like structure or they are secreting through the ducts so ducts is required in case of exocrine but in case of endocrine there is no need of duct the uh, products or we can say the products which is secreted by the endocrine gland they are known as hormones what we call them hormones and these hormones never flows through any duct 
right so how they are flowing they are just uh, sending their product or the hormones directly into the blood stream and they are, this will go in a particular place but here in exocrine glands okay in exocrine glands we can say the milk we can say the saliva oil all these comes under what exocrine one okay these are the secretion or the products secreted by the exocrine gland and they need the duct and through the duct they are uh, going right so we have discussed about the glandular epithelium tissue also now come to the compound epithelium see students when we are talking about the simple epithelium so the function of simple epithelium is what exchange and the second one absorption and third one is the secretion okay but they are not providing any protection why because they are having only single layer of cells so which one will be the more protective simple or compound exactly the compound epithelium will be the more protect protective why because they are having more layer of cells so these layer of cell will help them to be more protective if we are having any um, problem or we are having any scar so what will happen the healing can be done with the help of compound epithelium very easily because they are having different layers of cells okay so now here again compound epithelium can be divided into two types what are they transitional one and the second one epithel stratified epithelium right so transitional is what transitional the name itself indicates that which is not fixed its position or the uh, we can say the the shape of this type of tissue they are not fixed they can be changed accordingly how how we can say that and where it can be found example if we will talk about the ureter okay when there will be a urine inside it so what will happen they uh, they, they will be more inside and when uh, we are passing the urine what happens that the ure the bladder comes to it uh, same uh, shape right so what is happening so the shape is not fixed it can be increased or it can be uh, come to a its original position so we can say the transitional epithelium is not a fixed one and it is found in the urinary bladder right as well as the ureter also now the stratified the stratified indicates that having proper layer of the cells okay when there will be having proper layer of cells so what will happen they will protect they will protect so we can say the function of the compound epithelium is what protection it is providing protection to the cells right and protection to the organs uh, where it is surrounding that particular organ so here this stra stratified can be of two types what are they keratinized and the non keratinized now what is this keratinized where keratin is present if it will be there there will be more protection so in case of keratinized the protection will be more so where it can be found it can be found in a skin okay in a skin what type of uh, epithelial keratinized stratified compound epithelial tissue is present right and whenever we are talking about the non keratinized means that they are not that uh, they are not providing that much protection as compared to the keratinized but yes they are having the layer of the cells for example if we'll talk about the esophagus okay so uh, if we are eating something if it will be of only one uh, layer of cells it will be more prone to having destruction okay if it will be stratified what what happens it will be poor protect protection okay and what type of it is non keratinized right here so we have done about simple as well as the compound ep epithelium now whether it is whatever epithelial tissue or uh, in the earlier we have discussed uh, the epithelial connective muscular as well as the neural tissue so out of them out of them the epithelial as well as the muscular and the neural tissue are having some junction okay but there is no proper in case of there is no in case of connective tissue why because connective the name itself indicates that they are useful for the connection so they don't require any junctions here 
so cell junctions are what cell junctions are providing the structural and functional link what they are providing they are providing the links between the cells if these are the cell so what they are providing they are providing some linking structure okay how they are linked how these cells are linked from one to another cells but here also these junction can be of three types these junctions can be of three types tight junctions gap junctions and the adhering junctions okay so one by one we will discuss about it the tight junction the name itself indicates that something is very tight okay then uh, for example if i say if it is a cell if it is a cell okay this is one of the cell this is another cell so what happens that these group of cells will form tissue and this will form any particular organ it can be any organ which is present in our body so this type of junctions what they are providing they are providing very tight structure it means that whatever the uh, whatever the secretion or whatever the fluid it is present here they are not able to pass from here to here why if it will be passed from one cell to another cell maybe there will be some problem for example if i talk about the tight junction they are not providing any uh, any place to move from one place to another place example i have mentioned stomach in small intestine see in case of stomach what happens the lining of the stomach the internal lining of the stomach is made up of what it is also made up of this epithelial tissue if there will be a gap between these cells what will happen the uh, like the hcl is present there so it can corrode the lining of the stomach okay so what is required the cell should be very packed if the cell will be packed here what will happen they will not able to penetrate the cells right so there must be a proper linkage or there must be a proper junction or what type of junction tight junction so that they will not able to um, pass on the harmful fluid from one to another place right so this can be present where in the small intestine also in the urinary bladder we know that in urinary bladder okay if you will talk about the urinary bladder okay for urinary bladder it uh, contains what urine and the the tissue which is made up of here okay the tissue which is made up of here what what is required they should be very tightly packed if they will not be tightly packed what will happen the urine which is present inside this urinary bladder it may reach or it may leak from these cells so that's why it is required that it should be highly packed it should be compactly packed and from with the help of tight junctions right another one is a gap junctions the name itself indicates that there may be some gap for example this is one of the cell and this is the another cell so there may be some gap between these two cells now what is the function of this gap if any of the material have to move through these tissues okay when they have to move through this group of cells what is required there must be a proper movement and this proper movement takes place with the help of this junction that is the gap junction and this gap junction is providing the transfer of the cytoplasm with the help of transferring of cytoplasm they can be exchanged their things from one place to another place so he, these are also important in some of the place of our body like lens cornea and epithelial tissue so there where there is no proper conduction of the blood what is required there the conduction should be through these gap junctions right here so in the avascular tissue this these types of junctions are required third one is the adhering junctions adhering means something which are adhering to it for example if we we'll talk about any cell if we we'll talk about any of the cell when it will be when it will be for example if i will talk about this is the cell if it is embedding or it is surrounding with the whole of the protein plugs okay for example this is a pan if i will surround this pan with all the protein plugs it means that protein plugs are present from all the sides okay from this side and this side and front and back so this type of 
junction is known as adherent junction and how it is useful for example this is one of the cell and this is one of the cell okay and something they have to move like this from all the side they are connected so if any of these junctions are present this adhering junction they are connected with the help of this protein plug this will move its protein plug towards this side and this will move its protein plug this side like this from all the side it will connect it right and what where we can found this type of junction small intestine right along with this uh, three junction some uh, more uh, we can say modification that is the desmosome or hemidesmosomes in desmosome what happens in adhering from all the side but in uh, desmosome from only two sides you can find out this protein plug which helpful for the transferring right so here we have completed about the epithelial and now now the connective tissue here as we have said that it is useful for some connections so what they are doing they are providing the structural support to the epithelium okay whatever we have done in the epithelial tissue which is helpful for the protection secretion and absorption so they are providing the support to that epithelial tissue and how by providing the connections okay so here this connective tissue are widely distributed so in our body we can say they are what types of tissue are widely distributed connective tissue they can be found in many of the places and how they are uh, how they are present in the body if you will talk about the cells of the connective tissue because these are the group of cells so the cells which is uh, present here what they are secreting they are secreting some fibers okay they are secreting some fibers and these fibers having the structural protein and this fiber is known as what collagen fiber or the elastin fiber what are they collagen fiber or the elastin fibers so here these fibers are providing some function like strength elasticity and the flexibility to these connective tissue okay so what they are providing they are providing the strength elasticity as well as the flexibility to the organs right or the tissues so we can say that these cells these cells which are present in the connective tissue they are secreting some of the polysaccharide what they are secreting they are secreting some polysaccharide and these polysaccharides get accumulated in the cells or between the cells because these are made up of the group of cells so in these group of cells what they are happening the accumulation of this secretion takes place and this is known as matrix what it is forming it is forming the matrix so we can say that what are the components of the connective tissue the first component it can be the matrix okay the matrix like this what they are providing with the help of the cells or what type of cells the collagen or the elastin they are providing the background of the uh, tissue and due to that what will happen another thing which is present different types of fibers are also present different fibers are also present as well as the cells are also present so these are the components of the connected tissue right now on the basis of their functioning how they are stretching how their elasticity is present so these uh, connective tissue can be divided into three what are they loose connective tissue dense connective tissue and the specialized connective tissue now here you can understand that loose connective tissue mean that cells are loosely arranged okay or when we are talking about these cells these cells are connected what if they are cells these are connected what with the help of some fibers also as we have said it is providing the whole matrix these cells are secreting what these cells are secreting some polysaccharide which is forming the matrix and these cells these cells which is present here they are attached with this matrix right they are attached with these fibers which is present in the connective tissue so here if you will see in the loose connective tissue they are arranged very loosely okay in the dense connective tissue these are connected very densely or highly packed or highly compact it means that the fibers as well as cells are compactly or tightly attached with 
each other and they are more in number also. And the specialized connective tissue, we will discuss that some more advancement in this type of connective tissue. Now, these loose connective tissue can be divided into two parts. What are they? Areolar connective tissue and the adipose connective tissue. Okay. So, both having comes, both comes under the loose one, loose connective tissue. So, areolar means what? Areolar as well as adipose. Both type of tissue present where beneath the skin. As we have said, the outer or the free surface of the body <clears throat> what type of tissues are present? Epithelial tissue. Inner to the epithelial tissue, what type of tissue you can see? Connective tissue. So here, this connective tissue is present beneath the skin, both one. And now what is important here, what is the proper or the specific function? Or what is the difference between the areolar and the adipose one? If you will talk about the areolar one, what they are providing? They are pro providing the support what they are providing? They are support to the epithelial tissue. It means they are providing the uh, support to the, our skin. For example, our skin is there beneath the skin. What is there? Connective tissue is there. And what type of connective tissue? Areolar connective tissue which is providing some support to our epithelial. Right here. And this contains what? As I have said, there are different components of the connective tissue. Matrix as well as some cells and the fibers. So, they are having what? Fibroblast, macrophages and mast cell. So, what type of cells are present in case of this areolar connective tissue? Fibroblast, macrophages and mast cell. And another one is the adipose tissue which is also present beneath the skin. But now, what they are providing? They are providing some insulation. How? Because they are the fats. They are, whatever the food we are taking or the food, uh, the fat which is present in our food, they are stored in our skin. Okay, and they are stored there. So, these adipose tissue can be uh, stored fat in their layers and when it will be there, what will happen? They can be, uh, the heat loss can be prevented and it doesn't mean that it is just only present beneath the hand skin or the outer skin they are present at the outer side of the heart or kidney also okay so wherever fat is present this adipose tissue can be there right here so we have done areolar as well as the adipose connective tissue now comes to the dense connective tissue so this dense connective tissue same thing that they are having also the cells as well as the collagen fibers but here this Again, can be of two types. What are they? Dense regular and the dense irregular. Dense regular means that there will be a proper pattern. There will be a proper fashion. Okay. But in case of dense irregular, there will be no proper uh, fashion or there will be no proper, proper uh, arrangement of the cells. How we can say that in case of dense regular connective tissue, the collagen fiber, as I have said, between these cells, between these cells, some fibers are present which are helpful to attach it. Okay. They are providing some strength to the cell. So, the collagen fibers, they are present, how? They are present in the rows. Okay. For example, these are the collagen fibers. So, they are having proper fashion. They are present like this. Again, if you will talk about the uh, dense regular tissue, so all the cells are arranged in a proper way or in a proper rows by between many parallel bundles of fibers. For example, it is a bundle of fiber and between this there is a proper uh, connection and the fibers of this collagen is present between these rows of cells here right so here we can say there's a proper arrangement that they all their parallel uh, examples we can see tendons and ligaments tendons are what tendons for example if it is a bone if it is a bone okay and our bone is connected to some muscles also so when these bones are connected to the muscles of our body so what you will call they are known as tendons Right? When the bone is connected, when bone is connected with other bone, 
when bone is connected with other bone so what you will say it here this is known as ligaments okay this is known as ligaments so tendons and ligaments are the examples of the dense regular connective tissue when the cells are arranged in a parallel way or in a proper fashion right and another one is a dense irregular connective tissue it means that the cells are arranged scattered form there are no pro proper um, way or there is no proper uh, we can say proper arrangement like if we we'll talk about the fibroblast and the collagen okay these are the uh, we can say the protein and the fibroblast cells they are present differentially for example this is the cell they can be present like this they can be present like this so these cells are not in a proper direction or they can be arranged differentially wherever wherever they can be arranged so what type of tissue they are the dense irregular connective tissue and these type of tissue we can see where in our skin okay so in our skin uh, what type of connective tissue dense irregular connective tissue okay now comes to the third category that is the specialized connective tissue it means that some more advancement or some more different type of connective tissue but here again we have divided into two that is skeletal tissue and another one is a vascular tissue skeletal the name itself indicates that something which is present or it is making the framework of our body okay so it is providing the stiffness to our body what type of tissue skeletal tissue and in skeletal tissue uh, what is there cartilage and bones okay so we are not studying in details here cartilage is what we know that they are hard they are the hard one but they can be bent easily so we can we have given one term that these are the pliable okay they can, they can be bent easily and bones are what they are very hard they are not pliable they cannot be bent okay as well as if you will talk about the cartilage cartilage is what they are having what type of cells chondrocyte cells okay they are having the chondrocyte cells the these chondrocyte cells are present in a specialized space they are present in the specialized cell which is present inside it and this space is known as what lacunae okay this space is known as lacunae so inside this um, that particular space what is there chondrocyte cells are there chondrocyte cell while in case of bones they are also present inside these lacuna or the space okay these are also present inside this but the cells which is present in the bone it is known as osteocytes what you will call osteocytes right so chondrocyte and osteocytes now where can be found this cartilage you can see this cartilage in our nose which can be bent easily it can be present in the ear or the pinna of the ear which can be move easily okay so uh, they can be found at these places and bones bones are present in our body which is providing a proper skeleton to our body okay providing framework to our body so this type of tissue is what they are connecting they are connecting each and everything in our body here so skeletal tissue are these type of tissue and the vascular tissue is what vascular means something which is helpful for the conduction if we have to move any nutrients from one body part to another part so what is required there must be a proper conducting tissue okay or the vascular tissue and in human body what can be the conducting one that is a blood and lymph this blood and lymph is circulating all throughout our body which is transporting the nutrients minerals or whatever it is required by the particular organ so this blood and lymph are the example of the vascular tissue and it comes under the connective tissue right here and if you we'll talk about the blood we know that blood uh, having uh, different components right so plasma will be there and protein some inorganic and inorganic material uh, substances are present here in case of blood okay rbc wbc and platelet so we will discuss more about this blood and this lymph in the circulation system right so here what is required that you must know that these type of uh, fluid which is known as what vascular tissue okay it comes under the connective 
tissue okay so now we have completed the second part also the connective tissue so in the next session we will start the another one so that's all for today thank you